So HBO's House of the Dragon, it wraps up its debut season over the weekend, this along with Amazon's Rings of Power. It's one of the new shows that's creating a firestorm over the role of diversity in fantasy and sci-fi series. And it's led to an intense backlash online for actors and even those we've spoken with in favor of it have been subjected to racist attacks. Alex Perche explores this very heated conversation with the actors, creators, and fans. My name is Ryuko Matoy from the anime Kill la Kill, and um, she is Mako. Who are you dressed as? Uh, I'm dressed as Sam Wilson's Captain America from the MCU. How are we feeling? Overwhelmed, yeah. speechless, excited. Costume fans flocking to New York Comic Con to celebrate their favorite characters, as some of their favorite actors face criticism for merely existing in their respective projects. From dwarves working to save Middle Earth from evil. Durin didn't tell me you were coming. Durin didn't know. To the battle for power in Westeros. To the fight to vanquish the Empire. Black actors have been front and center in these spinoffs and prequels that are taking new looks at familiar worlds. But not all fans have welcomed the change. Racist comments aimed at a black performer. One of the new hit stars of the Star Wars series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, revealing she's been subjected to racist attacks online. Dragons are okay, fire-breathing dragons, and people with white hair that are born like that when they're little <laughs> and violet eyes, but the black people in it is just a bridge too far for these <laughs> That's stars. what he said! With so much backlash, black fans are beginning to think the real fantasy is a world in which they don't exist. From my point of view, I've never been in the public eye to this degree before. Sophia Nambetti plays Disa, Princess of the Dwarf Kingdom and the Rings of Power, Amazon's TV series based on J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings books. It's the most expensive show ever made. One day this will be your kingdom. Some of the things that myself and Ismail and other members of the company have experienced blew my mind. It is violent, it is harassment, it is aggressive, it is racist. It's sometimes threatened the lives of us and our families. As Sophia and her Rings of Power castmates aim to build a world of fantastic proportions, they face criticism from some people who didn't buy into that fantasy. Nobody's asking you what you think. This is what we're doing. And you're invited to come and enjoy and experience. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. This is John Ridley, an Academy Award winning screenwriter and director. He also faced backlash last year for his work creating the first black Batman, Jace Fox. It was less about, oh, he's a black Batman. It was about the Fox family and about the family that just became one of the richest families on the planet. Ridley says it's not necessarily about diversity per se, but rather, are these characters reflective of our reality? And he's become unwavering in his mission. And I would just love for young people out there to not have to bridge that gap between what's on the page and who they are. Representation matters. Um, it, it mattered in the 60s, it mattered in the 70s, it mattered in the 80s, I mean, it, 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 it matters. That's LeVar Burton, best known for his role as Lieutenant Commander Georgie LaForge in Star Trek The Next Generation, a series that has embraced black actors from the start, most notably with its casting of Nichelle Nichols as Nyota Uhura in the original series. See, in our century, we've learned not to fear words. So seeing Nichelle Nichols in the original series of Star Trek meant the world to me as a young black kid growing up in, in Sacramento, California. I was constantly looking for validation on TV when I was growing up, you know? And that's another reason why Star Trek was so important, because it was rare. It was rare to see black people on TV in positive roles, right? For Burton, having been one of the most visible black actors in this predominantly white space, he says the recent fandom reactions seem unique. I don't remember this kind of butthurt from what I call my melanin-challenged brethren and sistren. I think that that sense of grievance that, that has been expressed of late um, really comes because the, we've turned a corner where we, we recognize uh, on a grand scale how important representation is. To those who are privileged, equality seems like punishment. Growing up, I didn't see too many people that look like me. I think people really want to feel included. I think that's extremely important. With much of the conversation about diversity happening online, we ventured to one of the only places multiple fandoms can interact in person, New York Comic Con. This is Juju Green, a movie and TV commentator known to his more than 3 million TikTok followers as Straw Hat Goofy. I try to provide perspective. And I just perspective from my own personal 
life, but just it's like a black man growing up in America. Green found himself at the center of racist attacks last year when he started posting commentary on Disney Plus's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So let's talk about The Falcon and the Winter Soldier and how it's already bringing up ideas of racism and microaggressions in the MCU. Anytime he posts a video like that one, intense backlash would soon follow. For that to come from my followers, people who chose to make me their movie person and then invalidate my experience, invalidate my perspective. It was heartbreaking. Then came the Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale, directly confronting some of the themes Green posted about. The fight you taking on ain't gonna be easy, Sam. We built this country, bled for it. I'm not gonna let anybody tell me I can't fight for it. <laughs> Y'all didn't even wanna hear the conversation. Y'all didn't even wanna have it. Enough said. It took the character of Isaiah Bradley to say it out loud for people to finally say, oh, okay, that's what it's about. I think there's a contingent of people, whether online or in real life, who will always deny that things are about race, but it's good to have the discussion out there either way. Fantasy, sci-fi, creativity, any kind of storytelling, it belongs to all of us. I don't know that I can answer why somebody would be so upset that a person that looks like me would tell the story of being a dwarf in a fantasy show. There isn't an argument as to why people of colour cannot be in a fantasy world. There is no argument, non-negotiable. My introduction to a fan base really was The Lord of the Rings. They're fictional characters for kids and, you know, fans to see themselves being represented as being able to be whoever they want to be. I, I think it's beautiful what they're doing. We are surrounded by cosplayers and fans and children who look to us and are so happy and excited and grateful. We used to have white actors put on yellow makeup to play Asians. It was wrong then, it's wrong now. When you know better, you do better. The scope of the attacks is widening as studios continue to hire black actors for upcoming projects to play characters that were previously white including Halle Bailey as Ariel in Disney's The Little Mermaid. Part of that the hope is that these fantasy characters will one day look just as diverse as the people who love them. My experience is mine and yours is yours, so there has to be an open dialogue and they have to be able to receive it, understand where the people are coming from. It's not just your show, it's out for public consumption. So if you want to be upset about it, well... Go sit in a corner and think about your life. Okay, our thanks to Alex Prashay for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.